Okay, grade 10. So let's quickly go through all the different types of equations that you should know at grade 10 level, okay? The first one over here is linear, and this is the one that we said is like laundry in class. For those people that are not my students and you don't know what I'm talking about, but we said someone gave me an example. They said with laundry, you know how you sell, uh, sort things out? Either before you're putting it into the washing machine and you're sorting out all the black clothes one side, all the light or white colored clothes one side, and all the colorful clothes like that or you know when you're done with your washing and then when you need to pack it into the cupboard and then you're sorting out all the t-shirts one side and all the socks one side that's what we're doing here okay so think of it like that so if you look at this here and i even wrote it here for you, you take all the numbers to one side take all the variables to the other side and remember when i say take them over that's not actually mathematical language okay we're just saying take it over because it's easier to describe it that way, that we're taking this number over. Mathematically, that's not what we're doing. But if anyone would like to know what we're doing mathematically, I'm not going to say it in this video because it might confuse you guys, especially if you're looking at this video just before your paper. But if anyone wants me to explain what we're doing, please come and see me in class, okay? I'll explain to you properly if anyone hasn't explained it to you. But anyway, let's get back to the thing. We are taking this two over. So so we can get all the variables one side, all the numbers to the other side. So x stays on this side. This minus 2x I'm bringing this side. So negative 2x, sorting out my laundry basket, okay? This negative 5 stays where it is. And I'm taking this this side. So negative 2. x minus 2x gives me negative 1x. Do I have to write the 1? No. Would you get it wrong if you wrote the 1? No. Okay? Minus 5 minus 2 or negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. Divide both sides by this negative. Why am I doing it? Because I need to get rid of this negative over here. So I'm dividing here by negative 1 so that this and this cancel, leaving me with positive x. And I'm dividing what I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. So negative and negative gives me a positive, sorry, positive 7. That's what I'm doing. Okay, I have this one over here. What I want to do is multiply first into the bracket, giving me 2x minus 10, right? This idea, 3x minus, no, plus 15. Again, sorting out my laundry, everything one side and one side. So I'm going to leave the 2x here, minus 3x. 15 is already on the side of the equal to sign, bringing this over, plus 10. 2x minus 3x, negative x again, like the previous example. Anyway, 15 plus 10 gives me 25. Again, we're going to divide by the negative 1 so that this can become positive x. Divide the side by negative 1. 25 divided by negative 1 gives me negative 25. And that's my answer. Next example, this works even if you have fractions or decimals, it's perfectly fine. So half x plus 4x, take this over, plus x equals 3, take this number negative 2 over, plus 2. Okay. Because these are all like terms, we can just add and subtract the coefficients, okay? So that means the number in front of it. So we're going to say half, oh, sorry, plus 4, plus in front of this x over here, there's a 1, giving me 11 over 2. 11 over 2x equals 3 plus 2 is 5. I'm going to get rid of this 11 over 2. So we're dividing by 11 over 2. Dividing by 11 over 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 2 over 11 because of tipping times. Okay? So multiply this side by 2 over 11. Multiply this side by 2 over 11. Giving me x equals 5 times 2 is 10 over 11. And that's my answer. Okay? Next question, again, even with decimals it works. So 0, 2y minus 5y, take this over, minus 2y equals, leave this, the side. Right, so on my calculator, because they li uh, like terms, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, okay, you can put it in decimal form if you want, or in fraction form, I'm going to leave it in fraction form, negative 30, 
4 over 5 y equals 10. We want to get rid of this, so that's divide by negative 34 over 5 or multiply by its reciprocal. So 5 over, do you see how that's the reciprocal, the opposite of it? What I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. Okay, so this side we left with y. 10 times 5 is 50 over negative 34. We can simplify this. If you have your calculator with you, you can just use your calculator. Here we go. If you didn't have your calculator, you're just asking yourself what can go into both of the numbers, okay? Uh, negative 25 over 17. All right, that's what we need to know for linear equations. Let's move on to quadratic equations. Now, how do I know the difference between linear and quadratic? Because sometimes, I mean, look here. This one here is brackets, right? This one here is brackets. How do I know the difference? Linear is when our, exp uh, our variable is to the power of 1. Quadratic is generally when our variable is going to be to the power of 2. Okay. Technically speaking, question B is not quadratic, but we're using the same rules in this particular question, okay? Anyway, I wrote here for you that we want to get two brackets equal to zero. That's our aim. Or it could be three brackets if it was cubic, or four brackets if it was to the power of four, right? But that's other great stuff. But anyway, we want brackets equal to zero. We can use factorization to get to those brackets. Then you take each bracket equal to zero. And then you say solve for it, okay? So like this one over here, I'm going to use factorization. I can see it's a trinomial equal to zero. So x, x plus, plus uh, factors of one that are going to give me two when I add them. It's one and one. One times one gives me this one. One plus one will give me this two, okay? That means x plus one equals zero or this bracket here x plus 1 equals 0 solve this one it gives me x equals negative 1 solve this one x equals negative 1 that's how we do this okay this one here can you see already technically speaking let's grab a color pen uh, again. Can you see technically speaking there's a bracket around here meaning multiplication already right so if there's multiplication it means 6x equals to 0 or x squared minus 36 equals to 0 right this idea divide by 6 divide by 6 x equals 0 this side over here can you see difference of two squares perfect square perfect square with a minus sign giving me x minus 6 x plus 6 equals to 0. So x minus 6 equals 0 or x plus 6 equals 0. x equals 6, x equals negative 6. And that's how you would do this question. A lot of you guys messaged me about this question and so here's the solution for it. Do you see again this one? It's this invisible bracket around it. So 5x equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0. Divide by 5, divide by 5, x equals 0. 0 divided by 5 is 0. This idea, x equals negative 3. And we're done. Easy. This one over here, do you notice how we can first divide everything by 5? Okay, so x squared plus, um, we divide in here by 5, giving me 5x equals 0. Now, do you notice that there's an x? And remember, this can only work if it's an expression. If it was an, ah, oh, oh, what did I say? This can only work if it's an equation. If this was an expression, you'd have to show the 5 outside the bracket there, okay? All right, anyway, let's continue. Can you see there's an x here and an x here? So we can take it out as a common factor, leaving me with x plus 5 equals 0. Now, there's an invisible bracket around here, x equals 0 or x plus 5 equals 0. That one's an answer. This one here needs an answer. There it is. We're done. 
if we have two brackets and they're already equal to zero, you don't have to multiply out and factorize because then that would be just making unnecessary work. So x minus 3 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0. This gives me x equals 3, x equals negative 2. And we're done. What happens if this was another number not 0, if it was 2 or 5? Then you would have to multiply this out, bring this number over, factorize it, and then do the one bracket equal to 0, the other bracket equal to 0. Okay, that's what you needed to know about quadratic. Exponential. Exponential, we want the bases to be the same so that the exponents are equal, or we want the exponents to be the same so that the bases are equal. Remember all your exponent laws. Okay, remember how to use the shift fact button and remember that any number to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Right, and then you just solve. So see here, bases are the same. Let's use a color pen so you guys can see. Bases are the same. Right, so if bases are the same. Then exponents are the same. So we just say x plus 2 equals 4, x equals 4 minus 2 equals 2. We're done. Okay, we need to get, can you see this base is not the same as this base. So on our calculator, our calculator, you type in 243 equals shift fact. There we go, 3 to the power 5. So this idea is 3 to the power 5. This idea is 3 to the power of 2x minus 5. All right. So now we want the we, we see that let's highlight it again. Bases are the same. So if the bases are the same, okay, maybe I shouldn't be using such a dark color. Use yellow. Bases are the same. Therefore, exponents are the same. So 2x minus 5 equals to 5. Okay. So 2x equals to, I'm taking this negative 5 over. So 5 plus 5. 2x equals to 10. So I am running out of space. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals to 5. Horrible looking 5, but yeah, 5. Okay, next question. I want the bases to be the same. Can you see my 125 is not yet the same? So on my calculator, 125 equals shift fact. There we go, 5 to the power of 3. So this part here is 5 to the power of 3 to the power of negative 2. This idea I have 1 over 5 to the power of 10 minus y. Do you notice how my bases are still not the same? So I'm going to apply this rule over here. So the rule says if we have a power raised to another power, then it's going to be multiplied. So this is to the power of negative 6. And you agree with me that if it's to the power of negative, we put it downstairs, so it's 1 over 5 to the power of 6. And let's copy this. Right, this here, okay, I'm out of space, we continue here. Right, do you agree with me that this 1 can be written to the power of anything? Right, so technically speaking in this question, I can make it to the power of 6. Right, and because it's to the power of anything i can rewrite this as rewriting that part one over five to the power of six because if i had to distribute this to here and distribute this to here i'd end up back here so i'm going backwards if that makes sense if it doesn't make sense send me a message and i'll re-explain it to you okay now my bases are the same 10 minus y equals to six minus y equals to 6, take this over, minus 10, minus y equals 6 minus 10 is negative 4, y equals to positive 4, because here I divided by negative 1, and here I divided by negative 1. And we're done. Okay, next one. My exponents are the same, so therefore my bases are the same. So 7 equals x, done. Or you can write it the other way around, x equals 7, we're done. This one over here, because it has a 7 multiplied by 2, I'm first going to divide by the 7 here and a 7 over there, leaving me with 2 to the power of x minus 5 equals, let's 
swap this out. 224 divided by 7. 32. Then I want to get my 32 to the power uh, to be in prime basis. So shift fact gives me 2 to the power of 5. 2 to the power of x minus 5 equals 2 to the power of 5. Bases are the same, exponents are the same. Take that over. There we go. Right, let's go next one. Okay, this 1024 needs to be prime basis. This 4 needs to be in prime basis. So 1 over 2, you agree with me, it's to the power of 2. So x minus 3 equals 1 over. Okay, I do not have space for this, so we're going to scribble in another page. 1 over 2, 4 equals shift fact 2 to the power of 10. 2 to the power of 10. Let's scribble in another page. So let's just rewrite this. have this one and this one can be written as anything literally any number because one to the power of any number is itself this here can be written as one over two take the two two and then it's getting multiplied by the x and it's two getting multiplied by the negative three so negative six this idea one over two to the power of ten bases are the same exponents are the same that over divide by 2 divide by 2 x equals 8 and we done that's a bit skew sorry and we done right next question now the question where we have a multiplication in front so divide by 3 divide by 3 I got 25 to the power of x plus 5 equals let's take this out 9375 divided by 3 that's what it gives me 2 5 I'm going to make this 25 in prime basis I know that's 5 to the power of 2 and now this 2 is getting multiplied by the x and by the 5 this idea, I'm going to make that in prime basis. Shift fact, 5 to the power of 5. If the bases are the same, the exponents are the same. So, 2x plus 10 equals to 5. 5 minus 10. 5 minus 10 is negative 5 divided by 2 divided by 2. x equals, oh, out of shot. Negative 5 over 2. Done. And lastly, for exponential, I want to get my bases to be the same. Can you see how this one here has a negative exponent? We have one of two options. Either we shift this downstairs so that it becomes 1 over 5 to the power of 3. Or we can bring this upstairs, making it 5 to the power of negative 1. I'm going to do that for this question, okay? Negative 3 equals 5 to the power of negative 1. To the power of x minus 4. Now can you see my bases have both to the power of negative and they uh, not my bases sorry I have the same bases that's what I meant to say. This gives me to the power of negative x plus 4 the side still 5 to the power of negative 3. Bases are still the same. Negative 3 oops equals negative x plus 4 Take it over, negative 3 minus 4 equals negative x. Negative 7 equals negative x. Divide here by negative 1, divide here by negative 1. x equals 7. Done. Okay, let's move on from exponential. We're now talking about literal equations. Literal equations are usually um, equations that you guys have seen before, okay? Or even if I didn't show it to you guys before, you haven't seen it in science or accounting or EMS, it's fine, that's okay, all right? Not EMS, you guys do accounting and economics and business studies. It's fine, that is okay. It's just that they're very 
common formulas, right? And we want you to make something the subject of the formula. That's what we want to do. In class, whoever's my student, I told you guys it's like one of those games where you had to like save the prince or the princess. So like, you know, there was an objective like that. And I said, if you, that's what you're doing, think of all the numbers around it as like the bodyguards. Okay, so in this question, I'm asking you, I gave you the formula A equals pi R squared. I want you to get R on its own. So that means that's the thing that we're saving, right? So the, the first bodyguard in front of it is this pi, right? It um, It's pi multiplied by r squared. So the opposite of or the inverse of multiply would be divide. So what I do, do on one side, I have to do on the other side. So now I have a over pi equals r squared because this pi and this pi cancel out. Now I still need to get it on its own. It's not yet on its own. It's got something blocking it and the thing that's blocking it or bodyguard in front of it is the squared. So the inverse of square would be square root. So what I do on one side, I do on the other side. Now I got r on its own. Okay, because the square and the square root are going to cancel. I'm just bringing it to the side. Don't forget that when, oh no, okay, yeah, don't forget that um, whenever you square root something, there's both a positive and a negative solution. But in this particular case, because we're talking about r being radius, okay, this is a formula for um, area of a circle, then you don't have to put the positive negative because we know radius can't be negative. But let's say you didn't know that this was the formula for area, then put the positive negative in front of it, okay? Let's say it's a formula you've never seen before. Put the positive negative in front. A over pi. And that's our answer, okay? This one over here, I'm asking you, this is actually the formula for compound interest, okay? I want you to get I on its own. So that part there. So there's quite a few things blocking it. Okay. The first thing that's blocking it would be this P. How do we know which one's the first thing blocking it? We we tried to do the thing that's easiest to get rid of. Think about yourself playing this video game. If you were looking to save something and you had you seen someone with like a weak um what's this sort of ammunition that you had there or whatever. You're going to get rid of that person fast or you're going to defeat that bodyguard fast rather than if you've seen someone with a much bigger weapon or bigger bigger muscles or whatever, you're going to get to that one bigger. So this P is much easier. Basically, multiplication is much easier to get rid of than to the power of. Another way you can remember it, you guys all remember bod mass. When we're doing this, we, we're sort of going backwards from bod mass, okay? Bod mass is that you have to do brackets first. So when we're doing this, you're going to do brackets last, okay? Bod mass said then you do to the power of. We're going to do that second last. Division and multiplication is third. We're going to do that, what's that, third last or second, all right? And then addition and subtraction is last. In this case, we're going to do it first. That's what we'd be doing. So anyway, there's no addition and subtraction yet. Remember this one plus i is in the bracket. So you're going to look for the next thing. It's division and multiplication. That's what we're doing next. So what we do on one side, do on the other side. So I got a over b equals one plus i to the power of n. I'm not yet done. I haven't yet saved i, right, to solve for i. Oops, sorry. Go back. Right. What's now blocking me? It's the to the power of n. So the opposite of it would be the nth root. Same like how the opposite of square would be square root, cube, cube root, to the power of 4, the fourth root, to the power of n, the nth root. So what I do on one side, I do on the other side. So now I'm left with the root n, oh, uh, I mean, yeah, the nth root of a over p equals 1 plus i. I don't need the bracket now because there's nothing really in front of it or to the power of. The thing that is blocking me in this case in the bracket is the 1. It's plus 1, it's a positive 1, so that means the inverse of it would be minus. Let's continue over here. It was n over, no sorry, nth root of a over p. To get rid of this, we taking it over minus, so minus 1 equals i. That's our final answer. Let's see, next one, I want r2. How on earth am I going to get r2? 
2 over here. Okay, so we're going to first add and subtract using like terms. I actually didn't think this one through, but we'll walk through it. So this here is going to give me R1 times R2 giving me R2 plus R1. 1 over R. I hope this works out. I didn't think this one through. Okay. Um, giving me... Um, let me think what I want to do. Okay, let's cross multiply. Okay, so this gives me R1 times R2 equals R times R2 plus R1. I used LCD here just by the way. All right. I want to get R2 on its own. Okay. So that means, let me see what I want to do first. Oh, let's divide here by R because there's an R2 here and an R2 here. So I'm going to divide here by R, get rid of it. So this side I have R1, R times R2. Okay, this idea I'm left with R2 plus R1. How would I get rid of this R2 over here if it's this multiplied? The option, no, 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 wait, let's not do that. I feel like I'm stuck. I'm undecided what I'd like to do. Give me a second. Okay, I'm pausing this video. I want to see what I want to do. Okay, let's continue. I kind of got stuck there. I, I was doubting myself. Anyway, let's continue, right? Sorry, it was a silly mistake. This is actually just adding in subtraction of fractions. I don't know why I got stuck. I think I was left over here, right? I think so. Wait, let me just recap from here, right? What I did over here... No, I was here. Let's go back. Okay, so I said we want to get rid of this R and this R. Remember, this is our aim, okay? And this is our aim. So I said I'm going to do it over here. So I got rid of the R from here and here. Divide on one side by R. So I have to divide on the other side by R. So now I'm left with R1 times R2 divided by R. Ignore this part, okay? That's where I am, okay? This side here, it's the R2 plus the R1 that's left behind. That's what's left behind, right? From this bracket. Now I want to get rid of R2 from over here. Now do you see this is multiply? So the inverse of multiply would be divide. So that's why I divided by R2 over here. Okay. What I do on one side, I do on the other side. So that's why I did divide by R2 here, divide by R2 over here. This idea I did different times to just double check my answer because I was doubting myself. So R1 times R2 divided by R. Then tip in time, so multiply by 1 over R2. This cancels, this cancels. We're left with R1 over R2. There it is, okay? R2 divided by R2 gives me 1. This R1 over R2, there it is, okay? Now what's our thing that we're looking for? We're looking for this one over here because that's what we wanted. So I take the plus 1 over, giving me R1 over R minus 1. Okay, and this idea, we got R1 over R2. How do I get rid of this R1? Because that's what's in my way this time. I divide by it. Okay, because can you see it's on the numerator. So divide by it. Therefore, giving me the whole tip in times thing. I did it here for you guys. It's R1 over R2, tip in times. So times 1 over R1, cancels, cancels. I'm basically left with 1 over R2. So here it is. I'm left with 1 over R2. And on this side, because I divided by R1, I have to divide on this side by R1. This whole side divided by R1. That's what I have. Now do you see I have numerator over denominator, numerator over denominator. If that's the case, we can flip them both around, okay? It's basically like doing cross multiplication, somewhat like that, okay? So we can flip them both around. Why couldn't I do that for you? Because I mean, fractions, I can't I just flip it around? No, you can't because of the plus sign that we have, okay? If it was just 1 over R equals 1 over R1, you could flip it around. And so I flipped this around. This became my numerator. This became my denominator. This became my denominator. This became my numerator. And there we go. We got R2 as the subject of the formula. And let's continue. This was a kind of complicated one. I hope you guys don't get anything so complicated. I don't think we'd give you something so complicated in the paper though. 
anyway let's continue i wanted b as the subject form of the formula in a equals l times b can you guys see that this is area of a rectangle length times breadth so i want this one so that means what's blocking me it's l so divide by l on the side divide by l on the side giving me a over l equals b and we're done that was the easy one i hope you guys get an easy one like that in your paper all right, this one here, I want H as the subject. So this one here, what's blocking me? It's L and B. So divide by L, B. What I do on one side, do on the other side. So I got V over L, B equals H. Done. Okay. All right, we're done with literal equations. I'm going to go to simultaneous equations. And with simultaneous, I decided to give you guys one with just numbers and variables. And one is a word problem. So we can kill two birds with one stone. Okay, don't kill birds. Please don't kill birds. It's just an expression. Anyway, with simultaneous, our aim is to make one variable the subject of the formula. Then you sub it into the other equation, you solve, and then you solve for the other variable. Okay, you get to pick whichever variable you want to make the subject of the formula. There's no restrictions on that. However, I keep telling you guys, make it easy for yourself. So choose the thing that's the easiest to simplify, all right? I know that you guys don't like using fractions, so try and avoid that at mo as, as best as you possibly can. If you can't avoid it, then it's okay. Just use your fraction rules. But anyway, if you look here, if I divide, if I make x the subject of the formula, it means I'd have to divide this one by 2, it would work. Divide this one by 2, it would work, it would give me 2. Divide this one by 2, it would work, it would give me 10. So I know that this one here would work. Let's try it for the 4. If I divide it here, I'd have to divide here by 4. That's going to give me 1 over 2. Okay, not so bad. This idea, 20 divided by 4 is 5. No problem, not so bad, right? The side over here, if I had to divide, I'd have to divide by 7. Works for here because I'd have just x on its own. But over here, I'm going to have negative 3 over 7. Complicated. And then over here, I'm going to have 19 over 7. Again, complicated. Same thing if I had to do divide by negative 3. Here, I'm going to have 7 over negative 3 if I had to make y the subject. And here, I'm going to have 19 over negative 3 if I had to make y the subject too complicated so the one that gave us all whole numbers or was the easiest is the 2 2x so i'm going to say 2x equals 20 minus 4y divide by 2 divide by 2 divide by 2 giving me x equals 10 minus 2y i'm going to name this equation 1 if i name this equation 1 this one must be equation 2 then remember i said you sub equation 1 into equation 2 and I want you to see you guys writing that okay so that we know what you're doing all right so that means equation 2 said 7x minus 3y so let's say 7 in the place of x I'm putting that 7x minus 3y equals 19 and now we solve this this is a linear equation giving me 70 minus 14y minus 3y equals 19 minus 14 my um negative 14 minus 3 gives me negative 17y 19 minus 70 that's it i think it's negative 63 let's double check ah what did i type in 19 minus 70 oh it's negative 51 why would i think 63 why would I think that? Negative 51. Okay, divide by negative 17. Y equals, what's this? Divided by 3. Right, now we need to get x. So x we know is 10 minus 2y from over here. So... 10 minus 2 times 3, giving me 10 minus 6, which is 4. And there we go. We got our y value. We got our x value. We solved our equation simultaneously. Okay, almost done. Last question. Yes, this is the last one. 
last question it's a word problem it says tickets of a concert are sold at 6 rian thank you to the student who sent me this question just before i started recording made my life so much easier than looking for a question anyway tickets of a concert are sold at 6 rian for the children and 10 rian for adults it says if all together 150 people attend and they pay 100 i mean 1100 in total determine how many children attend the concert okay so this is a word problem and it's going to be a simultaneous equation how do i know it's simultaneous because they're giving me two parts to it they're telling me how many people are attending and they're telling me in total how much of money they're getting so there's two parts to it so what i like to do is let's write children adults I'm just drawing a table to summarize everything. Okay, all right. All right. So the number of children that are uh, the the price that the children pay is six rin. The price that the adults pay is ten rin. The number of children that are coming, I'm going to label it x. The number of adults that come is y. In total, the number of children and adults that come is x plus y. Just add in that. Uh, the total amount of money that the children pay, if it was um, five people, five children that came, you would say six times five. If it has twenty children that came. to work out how much money you collected from them you would say 6 times 20 but since we don't know how many they came you're just going to say 6 times x so 6x same thing for the adults 10 times y 10y in total the amount that they made would be 6x plus 10y now they told us that the number of people that attended is 150 and they told us that the amount of money that they got is 1000 One hundred. So see, there's equation one. There's equation two. Let's write that down. X plus y equals one fifty. I'm going to make x the subject of the formula. So one fifty minus y. Okay. Equation one. This idea. Six x plus ten y equals one one zero zero. Equation two. We're going to say sub one into Two, okay. So this here is going to be six times in the place of it's six x. So in the place of x, it must be one fifty minus y plus ten times y equals one thousand one hundred. Six times one fifty. What is that? One fifty times six nine hundred. We knew that. Nine hundred minus six y plus ten y equals one thousand one hundred. Okay, let's continue here. Negative six plus ten, negative, no, positive, four y, one thousand one hundred. Let's write it down first. One thousand one hundred minus the nine hundred, bringing it over, gives me two hundred. So y divided by four year, divided by four year, gives me fifty. But we didn't want to know how many adults came. We wanted to know because they said how many children again. So we know children is x. So x basically equals to one fifty minus the y value. One fifty minus fifty. X equals to one hundred. One hundred. And there we go. We are done. Okay, I'm done with it all. Let's upload this for you guys to see it.